you guys thanks for joining me today here at bar down sports co in overland park kansas today we are going to be working on a pair of graph supra 700s these things are in pretty decent shape the blades have been pretty uh pretty beat up they've got some pitting and rust on them so we're actually going to be upgrading to a bauer tuke light speed edge with some step steel black steel so um with these skates usually i would try to tell the customer maybe we go with something a little bit more modern these skates just fit the customer great they're in pretty good shape still so no need in um, upgrading skates these these skates have good life left in them and they're very comfortable for this customer so obviously first step is taking out these laces next i'm going to move on to taking these holders off as you can see from the inside here these are the threaded inserts right down in there those are the common fail point for a graph skate we see a lot of the screws rusting out, all the sweat going down into those. They're not as corrosion resistant as you'd like to see. And the screws, as you see, start to rust. Um, these ones aren't in the worst of shape, but it is a much better idea to replace the graph holders with a Bauer Tuke or with a CCM Speed Blade XS holder. As you see here, we have four and four for mounting points on the graph holder. Here on the Bauer, we have eight and six. So with four copper rivets total in the Bauer Tuke, and then the rest being uh, steel rivets, we're gonna have a lot more torsional rigidity and a lot more reliability out of the Bauer Tuke than we did out of this graph. Also with the modern steel available for Bauer and or CCM, this customer is gonna have a lot of life left in these skates since these boots are in really good shape. Now usually with a skate, the holder is gonna be held on with some rivets. Now these being graphs, they're held on by a screw. It's a Torx head uh, T20 screw. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, get the impact out, get those pulled out, and uh, move on to the next step, which is gonna be pressing out the nut certs or the threaded inserts so that we have more availability for pre-made holes to line up the new Bauer Tuke with. So I'm gonna get started on those and move on to the next step. So. Again, these are just held on with with eight of these fine thread screws and threaded inserts. So that's all. It's actually the easiest holder to usually remove if the threaded inserts are in okay shape. So um, no need to pull out rivets. Just unscrew these and push out the threaded inserts. We've got all the screws out, so now it's just as easy as pulling that off. Now we're gonna move on to pulling out the threaded inserts. So threaded inserts are sometimes a pain to take out. In this case, they haven't been too bad. I already did the other skate. The threaded inserts are pushed in. Um, these ones don't look beautiful, but they're just a little threaded insert that goes inside the skate. I'll use a punch to pull those out. It's kind of, uh, kind of noisy and messy, so I'm not gonna do that on camera just so I don't want my, my setup up here falling over or anything. So I'll get that done and uh, we'll move along. Next thing I like to do is just clean up these bases here. You know, this old white base plate uh, gets a little rusty and dirty after a while. So I just use a little bit of foaming bleach to clean those up. Reattach the base plates if they come off with some industrial strength glue. And then move on to the next step after that all dries. Now we're gonna move on to actually mounting up these tukes. The best part about doing some skates is that there's just some existing holes that line up so I haven't riveted these in I just got some long rivets in there to hold them in place but we've got three holes that match up very well and also align the holder very nicely in the center that's one of the most important parts because um, if those holes don't line up with something that's center they're not usable but right now we've got three existing holes everything is center so that'll mean I have a good reference point to use on the next holder I put on to make sure that it lines up the same as this one. So now I'm going to move on to just drilling out holes and I'm going to start riveting these bad boys together. And no, I'm not using a steel rivet there. We're going to use copper. We're going to do two rear coppers and on this one we're also going to do two front coppers. That way we have really good longevity in this state and really good torsional rigidity because this player is a little bit on the bigger side. Now, it's time to drill some holes. Gonna get a few pilot holes drilled so I can 
get a few rivets put in. After I put a few rivets in, we'll go ahead and start drilling more holes, get everything lined up, and then move on from there. So I'm just gonna usually, I like to start with two front ones up here, and then the two front rears to get myself started. And then after that, we'll start doing the rest. So uh, I'll actually start with the rear one here. We don't want to drill too deep, so I'm gonna try to keep from going through and hitting anything in the liner. So we try to stop just as soon as we get through. Next, next I get to pick out some rivets here. As you see, I have lots of rivets. I try to get everything organized nicely. The biggest thing is getting a rivet that is the right length. We don't want it to be too long, otherwise it's gonna bend whenever we press it in. But we don't want it to be too short because we want it to hold well. So I usually go for about an eighth of an inch longer then flush with the inside of the skate. So in this case, I'll probably end up using 11 16 or three quarter on these heels here. The heels usually take a little bit of a longer rivet in modern skates, and this skate, the whole skate's probably gonna take pretty long rivets because of this thick base plate here. So now I'm getting ready to mount up this holder onto the graph here. So I've got my, my rivets and my pilot holes. So uh, these are again the holes that lined up on the other skate. I already got the other skate all mounted up. And uh, these are the holes that lined up on the other skate. So I'm gonna use those on this skate to make sure that everything on this skate is symmetrical with the other skate. So you know, I already got this one all mounted up. I did four coppers on this one because these skates aren't as rigid as newer skates and it will really help with making sure nothing moves around. So we're gonna go ahead and start drilling our holes and get a few a few rivets placed in at a time. And then uh, we'll drill a few holes at a time, a couple rivets at a time. Make sure nothing's moving around on these because these are a little more flexible than newer skates. So what you end up having is blades will not be perfectly straight because things will start to move as you're mounting them. So I just gotta be careful and make sure that everything that I do here, I'm constantly checking the edge here, making sure that this blade is perfectly straight in here and not starting to bend and warp. So that's gonna be crucial on these skates. Now I've got the, I've got every other set in right now, except for these. Um, this way I can, as I go, make sure everything stays straight, and then I'll, after getting every other set in, make sure that everything's still straight. Then after that, it'll be much easier to put in the rest and everything stay in place, versus just going from the front all the way to back. Sometimes I also alternate. 
biggest thing here is just make sure my blades stay straight because if it's not, you're gonna fail. It's not gonna fail. So now we're gonna get started on the copper washers and rivets. So the difference between the copper rivet and the steel rivet is that the copper rivet is two pieces and it actually goes in from inside the skate instead of going in from the outside but also it is a lot stronger so we're going to actually put focus, um, we're going to put a copper washer over the top of it and then we're going to use our riveter here and we're going to actually have this which is my pin you can see it's rounded at the end here we're going to use that to actually mushroom out the end of this over the washer. Now as you can see here, that's how that looks. And this is going to be really strong. It's less likely to corrode. It's made of copper. They're going to last a lot longer and they're going to have a lot more structural rigidity, more torsional rigidity. Um, I, I like to put them here as well on, on the skates I do, depending on the size of the player and the skill level because I like to ensure that the skater is going to have a skate that lasts and is reliable for what kind of skating that they're doing. So this right here, this is going to be a regular steel rivet. They are hollow. They go in from the outside. Then I put them on my riveter here and that is the end product. As you can see here on this skate, how they flower out. That is the most common rivet to see on skates, and cheaper skates only use these. This one is actually quite satisfying to uh, to do because you put them in here, and then they make this awesome flower shape. They bite down really well into the skate. They hold nicely, but they're steel. They do rust. They don't last as long as a copper rivet. Honestly, I suggest having all of these replaced in your skates every year or two. I do mine once a year just to make sure that none of them rust because it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Uh, you never know when it's going to happen, but it will. Um, so just replace these regularly. Take your skates to your skate shop and have them do it. But we're going to move along to the, uh, the copper rivets now on this pair of graph uh, Supra 700 so so now I'm starting to my coppers here I put them in through the inside and then I'm going to press this copper washer over the post of this copper rivet I'll show you that here in a second so there's my copper rivet it's just going to go in through the inside here Push up and through. Then I'm gonna take this washer here, just a little copper washer. Place that on top. Press that down. Nice and snug. Now the next part is very important. Go trim them up. That way they don't. Uh, they don't bend. If you trim these too long and you go to, and I go to peen them, it's actually gonna bend them out. They're gonna look like a little S inside of there. I see it from other shops all the time and uh, I wanna avoid that at all costs because it kind of defeats the purpose. I always hold on to the top of the post because I do not want it flying up in the air and hitting me in the eyes. Or just flying across my shop and landing in something and doesn't need to be in. So now, I'm going to press down here on that washer again. I take this, which is my pin. It's a funny word, I know. So I'm going to put that on top. Keep pressure on this handle over here. Take the old ball pin hammer. Smash that down. And now, we have a nice copper washer installed on our copper rivet. It's mushroomed over that washer. The likelihood of that coming off when you have a good mushroom 
is very unlikely. Um, I see it all the time. I have these come in where uh, other shops have done this and they just didn't hit that hard enough and it barely did anything. And within a year, those washers are just gonna fall right off. Um, so it's really important that I get those done correctly because the whole point of those is to add a lot of strength to this skate and to make sure that we don't have any movement. So um, just gotta make sure attention to detail with everything we do because last thing we want is a holder falling off while somebody's skating and then hurting themselves. So everything we do is based on reliability. So I'm gonna continue on with those and uh, this skate will be done. There we have it. The skate is all ready to go. Now we just got to get it all put back together. Make sure I clean this up for the customer so when they pick it up, it looks really nice. We don't want to give back a dirty skate. We want to make sure it looks really great. We want the customer to see this just looking like a whole new skate for them. So it's a little, uh, little extra, but you know when you're paying money to have your skates repaired, you want them to come back looking great. You don't want to pick up a dusty skate, something that's just covered in dirt from you know years of use you want to pick up your skate with new holders looking pretty so we'll get these cleaned up for the customer I'm gonna to toss some laces in them and uh, we'll show you what they look like when they're done one other thing I like to do is we've got a lot of loose strings on here um, it's gonna happen these skates these skates have had a good life so uh, something I like to do I just like to take a lighter go over all the loose strings on these all the stitches Make sure that everything is just nice and nice and laying flat, no frays, nothing like that. Just make sure any strings that may want to pull out aren't going to be able to do so, so that we don't have these skates coming apart on the customer. Again, when we're rebuilding a skate, you want to think about longevity. The reason that we're putting money into this skate for this customer is because they obviously want to keep it all nice as long as possible so we want to do everything in our power to keep this skate going for years to come. It's looking good. Now we just need to throw some laces in there. Obviously, going to throw some Howie's laces in there. This customer had some yellow wax laces in there before, so I'm just going to replace those with some new wax laces. His were uh, kind of old and tired, so I just want to again make sure the skate looks good when the customer comes and picks them up. He didn't ask for new laces, but he's getting them. Just going to put the exact same thing he had in there. Um, obviously, we're going to use Howie's, it's our favorite brand of laces here at the store. So. Go ahead and get those put in. Obviously, inside to outside. Never lace your skates from the outside in. You always wanna make sure they go from the inside to the outside. It's gonna make sure that they tighten up much better. We don't want your skates to be hard to tighten, so. Make sure everything you do is with purpose. As you can see here, this this little pair of laces is just, it's crusty. It's time for a new, new set, so. I 
I make sure that I follow a pattern and mirror it on both sides. So um, on this one, I'm going over to the inside of the skate. So I go over the other over the other side to the inside. So on the other skate, I'll match that too because again, I want my customer skate looking as good as possible. They spent money with me. I want to give this coming back looking perfect. So uh, everything I do again. I don't care what it is, laces, putting an insole in the skate, it all has to be perfect because this customer is trusting me with their skates, something that if it's not right, they're not going to have a great time. So I'm going to put the uh, insoles back in these before I get too far, that way it's easy. Um, now the customer did not ask for new insoles, so we're just putting the Graf anatomical footbeds back in that were in there, which these are actually pretty good footbeds. But if I'm going to rebuild a skate from top to bottom, I'm usually going to suggest the Super Feet because Super Feet are awesome. If you haven't used them, they're in all my pairs of skates. CCM also makes a really great footbed too. My CCM rep is actually here today. But anyways, I'm going to continue on with that and uh, we'll be done soon. Speaking of footbeds. Super feet. We sell both of these at our shop. Um, honestly, it didn't take any convincing for us to sell these before we even sold these. I think just about every employee here has been using them. Uh, Super feet's been around for a very long time, and if you're not using the manufacturer's footbeds and you want something aftermarket, this is the only way to go. We are not sponsored or endorsed by Super feet. I simply just love their products and I will tell everybody I know about them because they really did make a difference in my skates for me. I felt so well locked into my skates after switching to these. I just felt like I had so much more balance because my feet were being held in just the absolute perfect position. Now they're not going to be for everybody. Some people need more or less arch support. Um, so you, know, you can only do so much with that. Um, in that case, some people need orthopedic inserts, but super feet, as far as off the shelf performance goes, these two are the greatest. The comfort is really nice, but I prefer the, uh, the performance ones, the Carbon Pro Hockey. These things have great support. I've been using mine for two years now, and they still work just as good, have just as much support as the day I got them. Get these if you don't already have them. Go see your nearest super feet dealer. Get yourself a set of these because they will make a difference for you, I promise. They are really, really great. So, again, not sponsored or endorsed by them any, by any means, but I'm just a firm believer in their product. Um, another good way you can go is the, uh, the CCM inserts. Pretty darn good as well, but uh, my personal favorite is Super Feet. All right, so we got new laces put in there. Went with some Howie's 120 waxed yellow laces. Customer had yellow before, as I stated. Um, just want to keep with what the customer had. I don't want to change anything up on them without asking, so just put a brand new pair in there for them. Not sponsored by Howie's, not endorsed by Howie's. We just sell Howie's, we love their products, so I, uh, I obviously am gonna use those. Uh, and Howie's just makes great products, so always gonna use Howie's laces whenever I can. Um, so we got new laces in there. Yeah, we went with the 288 Tuke on here, the light speed edge with the replaceable blades. Um, these are just some uh, old stock we had sitting around of step steel, black steel. So customers really lucky I had these sitting around because uh, you can't get these anymore since CC and bottom. It's really hard to get those for Bowers. So that's a great looking set of steel. I'll get those sharpened up. No need to put that on camera. That's pretty loud and uh, kind of obnoxious. So. Um, these customer skates here are in great shape. The leather's in great shape on the inside. These Graf Supra 700s are going to be alive for years to come for this customer. He's going to be able to get new blades if he ever needs to, no problem. So, uh, thanks for joining me. This is my first video of doing a skate rebuild. I just haven't seen any on YouTube or on social media, so I wanted to I wanted to really show what uh, what skate repair was really all about and how it's done so thanks for joining me guys i really appreciate it um and hopefully my customer loves these uh they look great that just really 
brings this skate into this generation, just putting those new holders on. These are the old Cobra holders, the NT3000s. Yeah, NT3000s. As you can see, the blades on these, they're short, they're rusty, they got pitting. Not great, so this is going to be a whole new skate for this customer. So, again, thanks for joining me, guys. I'm super happy to have done this video, so have a great day. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll make some more videos.